Uh, today I'm on the wonderful River Wye, uh, which I have to say has fast become my favourite river. Um, since moving up to Mid Wales over 10 years ago, uh, I found myself on this river a lot of the time. I fished uh, most of the venues from Ross all the way up to Hay on Wye and actually above. And uh, no matter where you go, it is just fabulous. The scenery is fabulous. Um, there's the, the, the way the river changes from uh, shallow runs to deep pools, there's rocks, there's weeds, there's bends, there's everything. But most importantly, in this day and age, there's lots of fish. And the fish that I'm particularly interested in, the barbel. Um, the Y is full of them. Um, but not every swim is full of them. Um, you've got to do a bit of homework and uh, you've got to get to understand um, just how why fish sort of like to operate, where they like to live. Um, it's a different ball game to the smaller rivers that, uh, down south that I may have been um, more used to. Um, fish here tend to be out in the middle. They like to get under the uh, bedrock. Um, they like to be in the flow. And the good thing is that they will feed all day, uh, all day long. For sure, you, you catch uh, uh, more uh, towards dusk as you do in most areas and that's because it's an instinctive thing for the barbel but if you go about it in the right way and get the uh, preparation work done which ground bait getting some hemp down getting some pellets down um, the barbel will all things being equal conditions being uh, uh, right they will uh, respond and come out to feed and you can have days where uh, you can catch 20 quite easily. Um, I've had a few days like that this season and uh, I'm very, very happy with it. And, um, you know, decent sized fish as well. These fish are um, average sort of six, seven, eight pounds and you, uh, every now and again, you'll get a nine, nine and a half pounder. I've been fortunate enough uh, on the days where I've taken people out, uh, mainly on the upper river, up near Hay, we've had a few double figure fish. Uh, not many, but, um, enough to make you realize that they, you know, they are about. Trouble is on the middle river and um, where we're fishing today, we're not far away from Ross. Um, there's so many fish that it is a bit of a needle in a haystack job. Um, and as yet, I haven't really gone down the road of trying to be particularly selective um, by employing tactics that might sort out the bigger fish, mainly because I'm just happy catching barbel on the wire. And uh, that, really epitomizes to me just what the river is about. You come here to have fun, you come here to catch what for me have been the hardest fighting barbel that I've come across in many a long year. You know, fish of seven, eight pounds, they go like crazy. Your rod is bent double, you think your rod's going to get pulled out of your hand. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, this is a fabulous river uh, and I'm fortunate enough now not to live too far away. So I get down here quite a bit during the summer. Uh, and I just love it. And I'm going to try and show you uh, some of the techniques that um, I use. It's pretty simple. Um, as I said, ground bait, um, which I've showed you how to mix up. Uh, getting the hemp down uh, and some pellets down with the bait dropper. And if you're doing that on a reasonably regular basis um, and fishing with, uh, for me now, it's PVA bags rather than feeders, uh, putting mixed pellets in the PVA bag, it does the trick. And you don't often blank, um, it's pretty rare. What I find, as I said, is that a, an average day would be five or six barbel. A good day would be a dozen barbel. And a red letter day, which come quite regularly, is 20 or so. And I've even left out the chub because there's plenty of chub here as well. And they run to a really good size also. So. You know, you can't beat it. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm on the River Wye, and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the ground bait uh, sort of mix that I use. Um, I tended to dispense a bit with the feeders and moved over to PVA bags, but I still like putting ground bait in. And what I do, um, I use the dynamite, uh, marine halibut, and frenzied hemp. Um, use that as the base. And then what I've got is a bucket load of mixed pellet, two mil, three mil, four, six, up to about eight mil. Um, 
all different types out, out, out of the range, you know, the sauce pellets, marine uh, I like to get a mixture, I like all the different sizes, uh, gets the fish sort of rooting around and picking them up and they'll, they'll find you a hook bait. And what I do, with the marine halibut ground bait, I tip some uh, the pellets in, mix it all up together, and then add a bit of water to get it to exactly the right consistency. Also, I like to introduce uh, the hemp via uh, ground bait. I will put it in with the bait dropper, but I also um, use it to um, mix up the ground bait. The liquid in the, um, in the hemp comes in very, very useful because it gives you, adds to uh, 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 the mixing process. So yeah, show you, tip the sort of stuff, hemp in like so, mix it around. It's got that slightly damp consistency, which helps when you're starting to mold the balls of ground bait together. And size-wise, I'm looking at um, creating um, probably Satsuma sort of size, you know, tangerine size, not quite tennis ball, about that sort of size. Um, I'll make up about a dozen or so of these and then just throw them at the head of the swim. Uh, if you get the consistency right, they drop down like a stone. They won't break up. You, if you've got the consistency wrong and it breaks up on the surface, you've done it wrong. You've got to get that consistency. It's hard. So that you want it to go in and only break up as soon as it hits the bottom. And if you put it at the head of the swim, for sure it will drift down a bit uh, during the course of a, a fishing session. But where the swim where uh, uh, this is for uh, today, the fish are already there. Um, they are hidden under the rocks and what we're trying to do is pull them out because uh, we don't want to hook them too close to the rocks because if you do, uh, invariably they'll get back under that rock almost quicker than you can, uh, you, you can, you can pull them out. So ground baiting is, um, is whether you put it into a feeder uh, and if you do that then you just um, make sure the consistency is such so that it will break out again just as soon as the feeder hits the bottom. But otherwise, you go for the ball approach. Reminds me of sort of if you were fishing for bream many years ago, but it works for barbel as well. So there you go, that's the sort of thing that you want to be aiming for. Um, and all the ingredients that you need are all there in the dynamite range. Yeah, so PVA, um, I do like making these little mesh bags, mixed pellet, into the tube, ease the things, ease them down with your fingers, twist it, overhand, knot, cut it off, job done. Simple. Put it back in the spinning array, so I'm putting it away, otherwise it's all going to dissolve. So there you go, that's what we've, uh, that's the feed that's going to go, the feed element that we're going to use. Um, rig wise, I've just I've got a running running lead, about three ounces out there today on that. What I've done, I've attached it not to the directly to this clip. I tied a loop out of that eight pound breaking strain line, and I've, used, I've that loop is what is attached to the running clip, purely because I'm fishing in a rocky area. If the lead gets called up, hopefully that will just break away. And uh, so a bit of a safe, um, uh, sort of a safe link, if you like. Then below, below that, a bead, the stop bead. That takes us down to the swivel, which is slightly different, my swivel attachment, because I've incorporated a PVA clip. Um, easier to show you one there, you've got the, the swivel, you've got the PVA clip, and you've got a little attachment so that I'm, uh, for fixing the hook length onto. So the idea of that with the PVA clip is that it's like keyhole shaped. So the PVA bag with the knot, you just ease that through the wide end pull it through and then pull it down into the narrower uh, part of it, the neck of the, the, the uh, clip if you like, and that's, that's it, that's attached. It's much better in my opinion to have the PVA bag 
attached where the lead is rather than on your hook because it will break away from your hook and it could go too far downstream. Um, you don't know entirely what the flow is on, on the riverbed, but better to be safe than sorry. If it's up by the lead, um, you know that it's not that far away and, and it will trickle down over to your hook bait. Length of the um, hook length, that varies. I mean, there are times when I'll go about four feet, which is probably twice as long as that. But at the, at the moment, I'm feeling that this is plenty long enough um, and I'm happy with that. Hook is a size 10. Um, plenty of, uh, I'm using Nash hooks at the moment, but th there's plenty of hooks out there you can use. Um, what I do um, find, I do incorporate a hook kicker. It just offsets the hook. Not only that, it keeps the hair coming off at exactly the right angle and position off the hook, and I quite like that. Um, the hook link material, that's, at the moment, armor link, you can use all sorts. I mean, there's so much out there. Um, I've, got all, I've got lots and lots of different types myself. Um, I'm just using this one at the moment, but it could quite easily be any other uh, um, a make or manufacturer. Um, 15 pound breaking strain, and I'll go back 12 pound main line. Um, I know there's always that slight concern about heavier breaking strains for hook lengths, but I've never had a problem with it, never had an issue with it, um, and nor do most people. So yeah, there's the setup. Pretty straightforward, that's it. Then what I also do, bait-wise, we're gonna use a 14 mil pre-drilled source pellet. I use the drill just to make sure the hole is totally clear. The hair that I use hasn't got a loop or anything like that, no stop. It just goes through comes out the other end, I just fiddle it so that I get it an eighth of an inch up from the top of the bait to the bend of the hook, which is what I like. Hold the thing over and super glue. I'm a super glue fanatic. Um, super glue just about everything. And all you've got to do with this, just into the hole. Couple of, couple of drops, a few seconds, and that's attached, and that's not coming off. That will wear down um, to a pellet half that size before um, it'll ever come off the hook. So that's it. That's my finished, that's the hook bait. Then before I cast out, I will take that PVA bag and I attach the hook into the bottom of it. This is especially useful when you're using really long hook lengths because if you had a, say a four foot hook length, all you're gonna have is two foot of uh, line hanging down. So there it is. It's as simple as that. Um, and that pretty much is my standard rig uh, for wide barbel. Um, yeah, no matter what the venue. It's no wonder that the river has become more and more popular. Uh, people now come up from uh, this sort of London area, from even further south. They stay up here in the B&Bs, which um, there's plenty of them, and they're very, very reasonably priced. And people come up, and, and the river is reasonably easily accessible. Uh, you can get day tickets for a number of the stretches, and of course you've got the Wyanusk Foundation. Um, you know, yeah, this is the place to be.